Welcome to the Practice of Medicine podcast from the Southern Medical Association. Since 1906, SMA has had a singular mission to provide medical professionals with the resources they need to learn from each other and in doing so, improve the overall quality of patient care. The Practice of Medicine podcast is just one of the many ways we do that as we discuss a wide range of topics, including the Physicians in Training Day in the Life podcast series. To learn more about SMA's many other services and initiatives, please visit us at sma.org. Hi, everybody. My name is Christine McAvoy, and I am the Communications Chair for the Southern Medical Association Physicians in Training Committee. Today will be an installment of our social media in medicine mini series, where we're going to be speaking with different individuals who work in medical settings uh, throughout the Southern region on how they use social media from their, for their day-to-day -day activities and gain a little insight into what they do and how other people can and what benefits might come from using social media in medicine. So today I'm going to go ahead and let today's podcast host, uh, podcast in, uh, guest introduce herself. Alrighty, hello everybody. My name is Kelly. I'm a third year medical student at an MD program in Virginia. I was born and raised in Anaheim, California, where Disneyland is. <laughs> um, I'm interested in internal medicine and geriatrics. In particular, I'm very passionate about the underserved population and advocating for underrepresented groups in medicine. In my free time, when I do have free time, I like to read, cook, travel, and sometimes crochet if I have time. Um, and I'm just really happy to be here. Great, we're happy to have you too. This is exciting that we'll get to collaborate and hear a little bit more about your experiences using social media. So tell us a little bit more about how you got started. And for those of you who are uh, listening, Kelly is on Instagram and has a blog and Twitter as well, right? I do have a Twitter, but I don't use it. <laughs> okay, so mostly yeah. Instagram and a blog called Kelly Takes Medicine. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about how and why you got started with this. Uh, Instagram yeah, and sure. the blog. So I've always wanted to start a blog just to document my experiences throughout medicine and the struggles I had as a pre-med. And uh, I wanted to reach out to other pre-meds that also are struggling because I remember back then that was something I wish I had, like a connection to somebody who could mentor me. So COVID came <laughs> and everybody was quarantining and we were taken out of school for about like five, six months. So I had all this time. And I just thought that since I'm probably not gonna get an opportunity like this, like where I have nothing to do, I decided to start my blog. And then I started using Instagram as, so it was actually a personal account and I just converted it to a medical one. And then I started using that to, I guess, advertise my blog. <laughs> so like I would just send updates um, via Instagram to like whenever I had a new blog post, but that's kind of why I started um, or how I started. I think the why is more related to the mentorship aspect and just wanting to connect with people who are like-minded, but yeah. Wow, that's a very interesting and a very good use of time as many med school <laughs> students try to find the best way to use their time because sometimes it's pretty limited, but in the situation of what happened throughout mm -hmm. 2020, we suddenly had all this extra time and how can we use that to our benefit and to benefit others? So it's very cool to learn more about that. What do you think um, you have enjoyed most about this whole journey so far? There are a lot of different aspects of this that I enjoy. I think the most, uh, the most rewarding aspect of what I'm doing is what I enjoy most because I think it's just whenever I get messages from people about how much my sharing my story has helped them and or has made them feel less alone I feel like that just gives me a reason to keep doing it um, and then just meeting like-minded people even though it's virtual I feel like during this pandemic, I think it's been hard for people to connect in person. 
So I think there's more of people are more present on social media because of that. And then I've been able to, even though it's virtual, it's like you can still get to know people and connect with them. Um, but the other thing is it's kind of just fun. It's like it's become a hobby. So, so like I know during lunchtime, I'll just open my Instagram app and just see like what people are up to and kind of, oh, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. And yeah, it's just, it's just fun. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about the process that goes into making a blog post and or posting on Instagram. What's mm-hmm. your creative, if you want to talk about your creative process or your editing process, how long you might spend on these sorts of things? Yeah. So for blog posts, typically I will post like a survey on my Instagram story if I have like several ideas and then I have people vote and then I just, that's kind of how I prioritize what to post first but I just feel like honestly there's so many things to talk about that I haven't run out of ideas yet it's just more about like thinking about the timeline and where we're at so I think some people are taking step one soon so then I kind of like okay well this is probably a good time to share like tips about step one so um, that's kind of how I approach the blog for the Instagram I think so blogging actually doesn't take too long because you, you kind of just can write as much as you want. Whereas like Instagram, it's like, there's a lot more thought that goes into it, especially with like the photo that you use and like the visuals, you have to be very careful about like posting. You have to post valuable content and attract people with the photos because with the algorithm, I don't know if you've heard, but the algorithm is a struggle sometimes because like you can post but then a lot of people won't see it. So it's like, you're not reaching the people that need to see the, the content, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I would, I can't, it's hard to quantify how much time I spend on it, but I try to plan all my posts ahead of time, like one day of the week on like Sunday or something. Mm-hmm. And it'll take me like a few hours to like work out what I'm going to post on the blog and then what I'm going to post this week. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Um, you've talked a little bit about you know, that the, the time you take on, you know, crafting your Instagram posts um, is a little bit different and in some ways more challenging. So I was wondering if you could chat a little bit more about what some of those challenges are that you've encountered so far in your experience working on social media like this. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. I think the most challenging part for me would be the time, um, especially during clinicals because time's limited during and you have to study and you're just tired all the time but I think having like feeling obligated to keep up with what your audience wants to see and like feeling obligated to post all the time and then juggling that during clinicals and but I just feel like sometimes the just it it kind of serves as a nice break from studying for clinicals so that's sort of how I make time for it or what I tell myself (laughs) Um, So that's really interesting to hear. And as a third year medical student myself uh, down in Louisiana, I can definitely relate to finding the time to balance clinical responsibilities with studying responsibilities with passion project responsibilities, Mm -hmm. um, or with hobby response hobbies you want to do and, you know, the rest of your life too, and taking that time for yourself. Um, So have you found it all um, that you've seen your social media presence help at all in your day-to-day clinical responsibilities or how you've navigated or seen or learned more through social media, connecting with others has helped your day-to-day clinical experience? Yeah, most definitely. Like it's not just med students that are on social media. There are like public health physicians and so many other resident physicians are on social media and like they share a lot of information. For example, when the COVID vaccine came out, there were a bunch of physicians making, like creating posts and graphics to share accurate health information about the vaccine. So I definitely learned things from social media. But I think another thing from being on social media, it's it's sort of changed my, my mind to be more aware of what's going on and to be careful about what I say. And then also just be more reflective from my day to day. Like in clinic, like I'm so I like to share reflections sometimes on my stories um, just because I feel like it's good to, to share that kind of thing once in a while because it kind of shows 
like gives people a glimpse of what being a real medicine is like. So, so when I'm, so when I'm in clinic, I'm just reflecting. And then like, I just think about, oh, what would be interesting for me to share today on my story? Uh, that's HIPAA compliant, of course. <laughs> of course. But yeah. Great. Um, we're, I'm a little bit interested to hear because as I've, you know, been learning more about your social media presence myself and learning a lot from what you post. Um, I've seen some posts about partnering with different brands, different mm -hmm. uh, businesses. Tell me a little bit more about how that works, how you choose somebody to work with and what comes out of that. Yeah, I typically, so before I decide whether I wanna work with a brand, I kind of research their mission and see if it aligns with mine. And I think my number one thing is that I want to only talk about free resources or resources that are affordable because I just feel like a lot of resources out there. I, I personally don't feel like anybody, any med student should have to pay for like a ridiculous amount of resources. Mm -hmm. So for example, I work with a lot of, um, well, not a lot, but two MCAT companies and they've um, offered like free MCAT prep courses so then I'll team up and then do a giveaway. And then at least I can help like one person in a tangible way. Um, and then I've worked with, I think the biggest company that comes to mind is Panera. And I love Panera wow. and they reach out to me. And I don't know, I think they just, maybe because I'm always like holding a Panera coffee cup in my hand, but <laughs> obviously because I'm a huge Panera lover, I said yes to that. Just, just, um, I think, the most important thing is to keep in mind like what your mission is and then also whether or not you actually use the product or genuinely like the product um, because I think there's a certain trust that you have too with your audience so like I know that like I know people that are following me like trust me I definitely don't want to break that trust just by like working with a brand that is completely unrelated um, just for money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how many followers do you have on Instagram right now? And uh, on in how many readers do you think you have on your blog? Hmm. Instagram, I think I'm at 12.2 thousand, 12.2 K. Yeah. And then my blog, I think about two to 3,000 readers per month. Um, but I feel like sometimes, I, I think it varies depending on the season. Like during the holidays, it kind of drops. And then it kind of, in the summer, it was like, when I was first starting out. So there was like more traffic, but mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. That's quite the reach for something that you've been <laughs> doing for almost a year now. So congratulations for having such a successful start to all that. Um, do you think, uh, based on your experiences, what would you say are some hurdles that healthcare professionals might run into if they're trying to start up something like this themselves? Mm -hmm. oh, Instagram is like, it's, it's like a love-hate relationship. Um, <laughs> Cause I think it's really hard to reach people, like reach the right audience if you don't learn how to use it. For example, I didn't know how important hashtags were until I started going on Instagram more, but that's, that's something like you'll have to learn if you want to reach the right people and just certain things like that. But the most challenging thing that I've run into is making sure I'm not sharing like patient information, like even if I'm not mentioning their names or anything, but sometimes talking about certain cases, like you kind of just have to be careful because I feel like even though you're not saying the name or the birthday or anything, it's like can be easily identifiable, especially if like people know where you go, where you go to school. So I've kind of been more low key about that too. <laughs> but I think that's the main challenge. And then also just trying to like say no to sponsorships without feeling bad and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, we got to learn and especially if we haven't yet by med school, how to say no. So that's probably very good to <laughs> yeah. emphasize in that. <laughs> yes. um, do you have, we've talked a lot about, you know, learning how Instagram works and how to harness those hashtags. Do you have any other suggestions uh, to those who are trying to get a start like you mm -hmm. have um, on what sort of things they should be doing um, mm -hmm. or what, sort of tips and tricks you might have for them? I don't feel like I'm an expert, but I will try to give some advice on this. I, so someone, I can't remember who, but someone gave me this piece of advice that I found the most helpful, which is to post content that's valuable. So, 
So in, in any way, like it doesn't have to be advice or tips about med school, but it could be like, for example, like I share mental, my personal mental health journey sometimes just to normalize that conversation, especially on social media. I think that's important, but anything that brings value or new perspective to your audience, I think people enjoy. And I think that's just how, I think that was the main, that was how I grew the account the fastest. And if you create things like posts that are shareable, like I've sometimes created like informational posts and then like graphics and people will share that. And then that's sort of how you just kind of expand your reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm uh, curious too, what sort of equipment do you use in terms of cameras and <laughs> tripods? I've, you know, I've been oh. learning more about this myself and how many different tools somebody may have, or they might do just one or two yeah. things they use to help I'm actually create all this content. Very, I'm so simple. I just use my boyfriend's iPhone 12 portrait mode. <laughs> I don't have like a tripod or like a ring light or anything. <laughs> I'm not that fancy. Is he the but photographer for the group? Huh? Is he the photographer for he the project? <laughs> yeah, I should probably start paying him, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, I use his camera because the quality is better. And then I use the Lightroom app to like edit the photos to make them look all nice. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so where do you see our, your social media presence going in the future? What are some projects you're working on? What do you mm -hmm. do within the next few months to year? What sort of ideas or aspirations do you have? Oh, I thought about this a lot. I think continuing to grow and just reach, connect, reach out and connect with pre-meds that are struggling. Like in particular, as I mentioned briefly, I, I try to advocate for first generation college students um, because I know like how hard it is to be like a first in your family to go to college, like much less medical school. So that whole journey is, it's, it's a struggle. So and I didn't, I didn't know about this med Instagram community back then. And I wish I did, or maybe it didn't exist back then, but it exists now. So I think trying to get that out there, I think will be helpful. Mm -hmm. And then actually something I'm working on is the, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before, but the, I'm working on a mentorship program, which is funny because it's supposed to open tomorrow or today. Oh, exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, it's an, uh, it's a mentorship program called the underdogs, like a, a play on the, term underdog um, and it's to connect mentors and mentees from underrepresented groups not necessarily only underrepresented minorities but like first generation college students or just students from low income uh, families and students with under average GPAs and MCATs that need that extra guidance to thrive in the field of medicine mm -hmm. so super excited about that so I hope that that kind of takes off and Hopefully, I mean, the long-term goal is to like increase representation of those groups in medicine, but that's sort of what I've been focusing on. Have you ever run into a situation around school where you might run into a student that you may not know, but they had heard about you and followed you and they're like, hey, oh. <laughs> I follow you on Instagram. Does that ever happen? No, because just because it's so new, because I started okay. this during the COVID pandemic. So nobody was like at school, true, but it's funny true. because somebody in my apartment building saw me, but followed me on Instagram and was like, is this you? Like, do you live in this apartment building? And I was like, <laughs> oh <my God." laughs> So one person. <laughs> That's very cool. That's very funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're able to reach people even outside of the medical, direct medical community yeah. too. And I think there's value to that as well, because yeah. I think with this pandemic, there's the experience that medical students and medical providers have. Mm -hmm. um, and even between those two groups, it varies a lot since, you know, med students, we've spent a, quite a few months not being able to continue with our studies or continue mm -hmm. only at home versus mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the population that may not be as well connected to the medical community or go to, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, people who are healthy or even people who just need want to learn more information there's a really valuable resource about like our experiences as well and to share those mm -hmm. with everybody else right I agree. yeah um so do you have any other advice you'd like to give that you have not given yet about social media and medicine hmm. 
I would say for social media, I feel like it's important just to have fun and not take it too seriously. And I say this because sometimes I take it too seriously. Like I tend to overthink a lot. And I think being having more of a presence on social media has led to me being more self-conscious about what I'm saying or post, but I think it's important to just be yourself mm -hmm. and just to, yeah, not take it too seriously. I think for med school, I, I feel like being proactive and taking initiative is more important than ever just because COVID has limited a lot of what we can do. And for example, like not being able to run into like upperclassmen and get advice from them. And then now we kind of have to go online and search up like the best resources to use because you don't have that like physical interaction or like the opportunity to meet other people. So yeah. Wow. Great. So I do have uh, one more question. I was wondering mm -hmm. whether you have yet been able to become an SMA member uh, for the physicians and training group, or if you're going to be interested in joining moving forward. Yes. Okay. I'm really glad you reminded me because that was on my to-do list. <laughs> oh, yes, I will. <laughs> So for those of you who are listening who may not be members yet, you can join the Physicians and Training Committee of the Southern Medical Association for free. And this project here is just one of many that we're doing. Um, you can either be a member or you can get more involved in our committees. Uh, and with that will come, especially throughout this coming year, uh, exciting opportunities to help supplement medical education um, and your experience as a physician in training. So you can sign up on, at sma.org slash uh, physicians and training, and you'll find the website has information about how to sign up, uh, our leadership team, how to get in contact with us, which can also be on our social media. Uh, we are on Twitter, Instagram, um, and we also are on LinkedIn. So you can find us at SMA underscore pit on Twitter and Instagram, and you can find us at the Physicians and Training Committee on LinkedIn. You can also email us at physiciansandtraining at sma.org. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kelly. Uh, it's been wonderful to hear more about your experience uh, through social media in medicine and what fantastic success you've had <laughs> so far. And I can't wait to keep staying in touch and following you and yeah. seeing where that goes in the future. Yeah, thank you for having me and best of luck to everyone listening. We hope you enjoyed the practice of medicine. For more episodes in this series or SMA's The Business of Medicine podcast, go to sma.org forward slash podcast or subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. For more information about SMA's physicians in training, please visit sma.org forward slash PIT. And thank you for joining us.